I'm Dr. Joseph M.T., Department of Sociology, University of Mumbai. This is E-Partisala Project, Paper Religion and Society, Module 3. In this module, this module is titled Anthropological Approaches to the Study of Ritual and Belief in Non-Western Societies. In this module, we look at the classical and a little bit later anthropological studies that have taken place in the way that they have looked at non-Western religions and religions, uh, ritual and religions in these non-Western societies. Now, I, we say non-Western because anthropology was considered to be the study of the other, while sociology was considered to be the study of the self as, as long as the Western European scholars were concerned. Now, in this module, we look at how these anthropologists, mainly Tyler, Fraser, Max Gluck, Gluckman, and Ivan Spichard, and a couple of others, look at religions of the others, which they call as ritual, magic, and other things. Now, something that we need to keep in mind is the way that uh, they have adopted certain terms to look at the other, like, for example, savages or uh, indigenous in some sense, and uh, the way that they look at other people and their religious beliefs and practices from an, a paradigm of evolution. As we know very clearly, Charles Darwin's theory of evolution had a bearing on earlier anthropological approaches. And because anthropologists were studying other societies, they employed this idea of evolution to understand other societies and considered them as precursors to the modern civilized West. And therefore, the idea of religion and ritual in these pre-industrial societies were looked at from that point of view. And we see the imprint of this in the theories of all these people that we have mentioned very, very clearly with certain kind of variations. So we will look at these variations as well. But the paradigm that we look at from today's point of view is the way that anthropology has constructed the other and how anthropology has looked at the other's religion, ritual and belief. Now, in this module, what we are basically doing is that uh, we are looking at the corpus of knowledge that is generated dealing with non-Western cultures and communities because there has been a kind of uh, a way in which anthropology was understood as the study of the other. And here, the other means non-Western people, communities and societies. So, let's have a look at summarized understanding of uh, anthropological approaches to ritual and religion in the non-Western societies. What is happening? Happening is also like you know the initial classical anthropological positions in cultural anthropology as we have already heard in uh, module 2 is uh, evolutionary so evolution became a dominant idea and therefore people who did anthropology looked at religion and religions in non-western cultures as uh, in different stages of evolution so we start with uh, Tyler, Morgan and Fraser, actually the three, the triad, as it were, the three main people in classical cultural anthropology. So in that we specifically look at Fraser and Tyler, whom we call actually intellectualist approaches to belief. Now what uh, Edward Bernard Tyler, the, the full name is, I mean he is also someone who is credited with the beginning of uh, cultural anthropology in that sense. Like everyone else in that sense makes uh, a distinction between primitive and modern cultures. And uh, he would say that uh, primitive cultures have obviously rational beliefs, but they are erroneous because they mistake the association for causation. So what is seen as a cause effect is actually an association. Now, Fraser, who is James Fraser, differentiates between stages of development of religion. Like many other evolutionary thinkers of his time, he looked at uh, stage by stage evolution of uh, human development or knowledge or whatever, which is from magic magic, religion and science. Magic is the earliest, religion is the second and science is the most recent and the most developed and the most evolved according to him. He would say that the magical and scientific beliefs are based on unchanging natural laws. Now, while religious beliefs are flexible in nature and affected by both.
Now, there has also been certain critiques of this intellectualist approach, mainly by, you know, student of Radcliffe Brown, that is E.E. Uh, e. Evans Prichard. Now, he criticizes both Tyler and Fraser, and he argues that uh, the uh, primitive person, uh, they have actually imagined the primitive person as so-and-so, and then they have tried to reconstruct how they must have developed their beliefs, and therefore the evolutionary idea on which they have constructed the primitive itself is problematic. Now, we would say that Ivan Prichard also says that such an intellectualist understanding with its individual psychology prevents them from seeing magical associations are actually social and not actually natural and therefore they are invoked in certain social rituals. Now, uh, another person who would have certain kind of uh, a contribution to earlier anthropological approaches to ritual and religion is uh, Lucien Levy Brule, and uh, obviously taking on from a Durkheimian understanding where he looks at belief as collective representation as, or as collective solidarity or as collective consciousness as Durkheim actually talks about them. Now, Levy Brule again, like almost all the thinkers of his time, made a distinction between the primitive and the civilized, and he said that each of these has a, a distinct mentality in primitive what he calls our pre-logical societies uh, and and he says that in such a society you know there is belief but there is no people are in a pre-logical stage people are not able to or not successful or not equipped enough to see the difference between perception and representation the thing is like Durkheim is also interesting because he looks at actually the structures that underlie beliefs and the rituals that uh, give these beliefs force because the structures and the rituals together construct the collective solidarity on which groups construct themselves. Now, functionalism has played a lot of importance in anthropology, as we know. Uh, structural functionalism of Radcliffe Brown or psychological functionalism of Malinowski. Now, both of these people have not directly looked at religion alone. They have looked at religion as part of their holistic anthropological studies because in anthropology of their time, they looked at all aspects of a community's life to come to a total a holistic understanding of their cultures. Now, Malinowski emphasizes that both in primitive and modern cultures, they are magical and scientific beliefs. Each set of beliefs performs a different function for the individuals holding them. For example, he would talk about um, cultural or natural or psychological logic behind ritual and magic in the sense that he talks about, you know, the fishing expeditions that uh, people who go on fishing expeditions, when they go to out sea where there is a lot of danger, it is preceded by long rituals and when they go to lagoons and lakes to fish which does not have much danger they have very little of magic so he sees magic as performing the function of uh, doing away with fear in fishing expeditions now we go to Radcliffe Brown who also talk about beliefs having a function but very clearly the distinction between Malinowski and Radcliffe Brown is that Radcliffe Brown looks at belief and rituals having a societal base and a societal structure not so much a psychological and individual structure as in the case of Malinowski. Now, we could also look at uh, rituals differently. Now, one way of looking at rituals is also a kind of a, a safety valve mechanism, as they would call, that uh, rituals could be enactments of rebellion and rituals could also be relaxation of social rules. Max Gluckman, this uh, anthropologist who did his studies in South Africa, he theorizes that rituals of rebellion allow for a temporary role reversal in social hierarchies, but these temporary breaks only reinforce the overall societal cohesion. Now, how do we understand? We can understand this by, you know, any social structure. It is observed by anthropologists and sociologists that uh, has certain safety valve mechanism. And one of these safety valve mechanism are temporary moments of relaxation where people ritualize rebellion or people ritualize opposition to this particular kind of a structure for a temporary period of time. And this acts as a, a time when sentiments of rebellion or relaxation can be expressed so that at the end of the day, it gives more powers of uh, structure and the powers of social cohesion at a time. So that's a very interesting idea that Gluckman is bringing to the fore. In addition to this, Norbeck suggests that uh, he talks about rituals of rebellion, uh, which can be seen as uh, a part of a category of rituals that allow for momentary relaxation of social roles, but overall affirm social societal unity. Now, both of these people are saying, the same thing that rituals of rebellion and rituals of uh, relaxation in some way are safety valve mechanisms
mechanisms which give people certain ritualized uh, time ritualized kind of a space to perform things differently but they at the end of the day actually solidify rituals as such two important people who have done a lot of studies on ritual i mean along with others is arnold van gennep and victor turner now van gennep's work rites of passage have become a kind of a classic which is taught to this day now what is rites of passage he talks about what we call life cycle rituals life cycle rituals are rituals that precede the transition of a person from one stage of life to another now this stage could mean many things now for example marriage marriage is a life cycle ritual marriage it changes the status of the person from unmarried to married and uh, different cultures have different rites and rituals that accompany marriage to mark this particular rite of passage now vanol van gennep says that uh, there are three stages to each ritual rite that we perform one is a stage before and then an ambiguous middle and a stage after now for example in case of marriage before marriage stage which we call spinsterhood or bachelorhood is a clear kind of a category and after marriage there is a stage of married that is again a clear category now there are certain days certain months or certain times certain practices which are in between and that in between middle is that he calls the ambiguous time and this time is the time of ritual and these rituals can be prolonged these rituals can be short these rituals can have many kind of uh, implications now all of these are part of that ambiguous middle that is talking about now victor turner had built on this idea and uh, this ambiguous stage that van gennep talks about victor turner names it liminal and his idea of liminality which he calls betwixt and between something is something that is celebrated in that sense because liminality creates its own structure in that sense now people who are in the liminal stage together uh, for them a particular kind of uh, they could be uh, taken into a different place they could be put in a different ritual there is a way in which particular kind of uh, a unity a particular kind of connection develops between them which he calls communitas so it's, which is very interesting so his ideas of the liminal and the idea of communitas has actually become very very powerful in that sense in the way that he has taken on from the ideas of van gennep to the next stage so he would talk about uh, you know and when he talks about the notion of communitas he's also talking about rituals as generating certain human bonds which go beyond the hierarchical structures of society now we go to two other interesting anthropologists one is clifford geertz and then morris bloch now clifford geertz would look at symbols as constituting the world view of society and ritual retains this world view by making it seem real and constant in every changing world conditions like like uh, he makes a distinction between the ethos and the world view of every civilization every culture and the symbol and the ritual become very important in that Now Morris Bloch challenges this um, approach because Morris Bloch being um, one problem with Clifford Geertz is that when he emphasizes meaning a lot he emphasizes meaning of symbols meanings of rituals he, he doesn't historicize them so Morris Bloch points this out and he says that it's by looking at history that we can see the changing nature of rituals and the systems of power and domination which are be- behind these rituals Now this is the line of argument that is also taken on by postcolonial scholars such as Talal Asad. Now Talal Asad has in his critique of Clifford Geertz talked a lot about the authorizing power behind ritual and belief because the who things or who characterizes such certain beliefs and certain rituals as canonical and who other rituals are excluded from this. So there is an authorizing kind of an authority to certain people who actually give this certificate of canon to certain rituals and beliefs and therefore it is important to look at this now he in his uh, book genealogies of religion with an king at western christianity and islam he has uh, marked this out very very clearly so that is uh, all this kind of uh, understanding that we have with regard to the sociology the anthropology of religion and the way that they have uh, looked at uh, different religious systems now there is we need to do something about anthropology and the colonial encounter which is theorized by talal asad because there is a way in which talal asad also looks said in the study of ritual and religion the influence of western scholars looking at religion from the semitic background has had its uh, uh, enormous impact on the study of ritual and religion from an anthropological perspective that opens up the way for a uh, newer understandings now these days there is a lot of talk about um, anthropology from the south and if anthropology from the south is talked about these categories need a lot of uh, questioning that uh, first of all we have gone beyond the idea of evil 
evolution we have gone beyond the idea of functionalism we are also going beyond the idea of meanings today we are in a position where we question we look at the dynamics of power that plays itself out in ritual and religion and uh, the way that power marks itself out in many authorizing ways in which as said by talala sadan this is something that is very helpful to us in south asia to look at religion and rituals from an anthropological point of view so in a nutshell we have seen many ways in which anthropologists have looked at religion from evolution to function to meaning and to what we call power but at the same time there are also anthropologists like uh, you know levi strauss and uh, lu dumo who have also looked at internal structure the what they call the internal structure of the mind or the internal structure of the intellect which things in binaries in dualistic categories and how such ordering of the mind ha- can is worked out in religion and ritual as well so that is something that uh, we have not actually looked at in this chapter very clearly but that could also have its repercussions because lee dumo actually written a lot on india in the context of certain communities and in his general kind of exegesis in that sense of the caste system in this module we have looked at the classical and earlier anthropological approaches to ritual and belief in non-western societies primarily we have looked at the paradigm that classical anthropologists have used in understanding ritual and religion of other peoples and this paradigm has been predominantly evolutionary and at the same time we have analyzed their theories in some detail to understand the ways in which they have looked at the original ways in which religion has developed in terms of magic in terms of animism or in terms of other kind of expressions like witchcraft and others and the anthropologists that we have uh, looked at are uh, edward tyler james fraser evans prasad max glukman thank you